So the Windows 11 event just wrapped up and I want to share some details that wasn't really spoken about in the event and give you my thoughts on the update. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, it's Mike from Sabrin and if you enjoy tech then consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell to stay updated. Microsoft has teased Windows 11 for a few weeks now and there has even been a leak of an early copy of Windows 11, but now we have the details. The main overhaul is the design and I like it. It's definitely a step up with the rounded corners and the translucent glass look across the OS. They've introduced this new light and dark mode which definitely feels like it came from uh, Mac OS but if it makes it look good then I'm all up for them copying it. Sliding over from the left screen reveals a page of widgets and it gives you a whole bunch of information to start your day or to check on what's going on with the news for example and it's all powered by a AI, so it should get smarter the more you use it. And speaking of some of the UI changes, multitasking and using Windows for work and pleasure has gotten better. With Snap Layout, it gives you a whole bunch of power when repositioning all of the windows on your desktop. Snap Groups gives you a collection of apps that really makes me excited because it allows you to have different workspaces depending on what you're doing. You can have different desktop looks as well for different situations, so for example, if you're at work and you want that professional look, you can customize it to have that professional look. But then when you get home, you can have your family photo as the wallpaper, for example, and have brighter accent colors. They've made docking and undocking easier too. Now apps go back to the way that they were set when you redock your laptop. I love this feature because sometimes I use my laptop in dock mode or in laptop mode, but I always have to adjust everything every time I switch between the modes. Now I don't have to worry about that. Computers with Windows Hello will now start even faster with Windows 11 and one major update that I think people will be looking forward to is the fact that with Windows 11 now it has 40% smaller updates and it will be even more efficient because now those updates will happen in the background. Windows 11 will also be more battery efficient meaning better battery life on your laptop but there is no exact figures on how much more battery efficient it will be. Teams is integrated directly into Windows, similar to FaceTime on Macs, and it works with almost every platform, including iOS. Now, I don't know how this feature will make Teams more mainstream, because Teams is used in a business environment, not typically for personal use, as most people have WhatsApp, Messenger, or FaceTime for all of that kind of stuff. And for me personally, that's what I use, and I don't use Teams unless it's in a business situation. For two-in-one laptop users, Windows 11 has brought a more touch focus experience when in tablet mode. So when you detach your keyboard, the dock icons space out a little bit, making it easier to touch. It also has bigger touch targets, making it easier for resizing and moving windows. They've also added gestures, just like on the trackpad on a normal laptop, to make using your two-in-one as a tablet more familiar to you. And when you rotate your computer in tablet mode, everything rotates in a logical way too. Just to let you know, tablet mode from Windows 10 is now gone. This is the new interface. The new touch keyboard when in tablet mode when you're holding your two-in-one in your hands means that you can just hold it and then use your thumb or finger to type and the spacebar doubles as a cursor too. You'll also see some emojis as well. And if that doesn't work for you, there is also a voice typing feature as well. And it's smart because it auto punctuates and has voice commands for typing. Cortana will no longer be included in the first boot experience or be pinned into the taskbar by the way. They've also added haptics to pen supported devices and I really want to try these haptics out because using a pencil doesn't really have obviously any vibration so I want to know how this feels and if it feels natural or just weird. Now let's move on to gaming because we like to game on our PC not just work. A brand new feature that has come from the Xbox consoles is Auto HDR which automatically updates colour and lighting for HDR. You will need an HDR compatible monitor but many people have these in their homes now. Over a thousand games will be automatically supported with this with no input from you or the developer. Something else that's really exciting is direct storage coming to Windows from the Xbox. Games can now load assets into the GPU without bogging down the CPU. This means better and smoother gameplay. Now you will need the right hardware for this but this will make a huge difference for gaming for sure. Shame you can't buy any GPUs right now if you need one. They rebuilt the Windows Store 
app too with a new look and easy to use interface. And the big headline is that now you can run Android apps via the Amazon App Store. The setup is a bit weird, but Anyway, they can integrate into your Windows platform like any other app on Windows. Now, they did say that it uses some kind of Intel technology for this, so there's no word on whether this will work with AMD processors or SOCs from Qualcomm, for example. They did speak about the commerce engine and how developers can choose theirs or their own, which is a bit interesting because it might be a small dig on how Apple runs its app store. So overall, I'm excited for this update. It's coming to pre-builds later on this year, and you'll be able to update your own computer if it runs Windows 10 pretty soon. There is a compatibility test on the Microsoft website to check if you have the right hardware for it. Now, if you want a standard alone copy of Windows 11. They will be available in early part of 2022, but there's no word on pricing. Now, I can assume that it won't cost any more than the current Windows 10 offerings, because otherwise you would just be better off buying a Windows 10 copy and then just upgrading that for free. If you use the Windows 11 test and it says that it doesn't work, even though you think you might have the right hardware, you might want to make sure that you have Secure Boot enabled in your BIOS and make sure that you've enabled Intel PTT or AMD FTPM enabled in your BIOS as Windows requires TPM 2.0 on your system. Also, your graphics card need to be able to run DirectX 12. So if it doesn't, well, you'll either have to wait until GPU prices drop or start saving. Luckily, Windows 10 service life is until 2025, so you have a bit of time. With all these new design and function changes, it might bring people who are platform agnostic from Mac back to Windows. Of course, we'll be testing out Windows 11 on our systems and we'll be giving you our thoughts. So make sure to stay subscribed to see how that runs before you end up running it on yours. Anyway, that's it for today. Comment down below your favorite feature of Windows 11 that you are excited to see or use. And also give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to stay updated. But for now, take care and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.